everyone. Welcome back to another video on art therapy. My name is Lauren Fallett and I work for Holistic Health Counseling Center. For today's video post, we're going to be exploring the material of chalk pastels. I'm going to show you what I have and then go into um, a, a guided process and show you how I work with them. Okay. So I'm looking forward to a lot of these video posts, uh, being able to show you my process and how I work with different materials. I want to preface and say that um, with art therapy and my own journey uh, using art materials to express myself, I wanted to say that there's no right or wrong way in art therapy. Uh, it's really about connecting to the materials and seeing how they work for you, what you like, what you don't like, what emotions are coming up in the moment, what piques your interest, um, and what helps you discover and learn more about yourself uh, in the whole process, right? So as we go through each of these videos and as you're learning about different materials, I want you just to keep that in mind, that the way that I do something is really just to show you authentically how I work and what my process looks like um, and you are going to find your own way and that's the beauty of this and hopefully working with a therapist, an art therapist in the future or maybe you already are, is incorporating these uh, values and ideas in your own healing. So I want to jump right into the drawing process with you using the chalk pastels. Before I do that, I do want to show you the materials I'm working with today. Um, so these are a set of soft pastels. I'll just hold it up so you can see. So these are handmade soft pastels. I'll show them to you here. They're pretty small. I'm also working with my Prismacolor New Pastels. These have been used, so they're a little bit um, <laughs> well-loved, I like to say. So these come in an assortment of colors. Some boxes contain 12, some are 24, and there's larger ones. And then I also have um, some pan pastels that I like to use to create a background, um, and also different tools here. So. I liken these to makeup sponges, so if you have those you can use them, or paper towel. So I have a few here that I have been using. This one comes on um, a stick here, so you can blend uh, the different colors using these sponges, or you might see me in this process using my hands. Um, so those are the materials I'm going to work with, and I also have this piece of paper. It is. Um, Canson XL Mixed Media. This is one of my favorites and it's a 12 by 18 size. You can definitely go smaller if you like, but for me the larger uh, paper helps me just to use my hands more. I can make bigger movements but also add those extra details. So keep that in mind um, when you're working with the materials and when you're choosing paper, uh, giving yourself some space to express yourself. Sometimes when you work on a smaller piece of paper, um, it might feel a little bit too constrained. So see, you know, what your comfort level is. Sometimes we want to use bigger arm movements, and that's why we choose the larger paper. You can go as high as 18 by 24, 24 by 36. Um, you know, you can try what works for you. Okay, so I have you angled so that you can see my paper here, but I'm gonna be talking throughout the process. Uh, and just wanted to let you know how I go into my artwork. Um, so when I'm sitting down and getting ready to work, setting up my space is always part of the process for me, even as an art therapist, I do try to create an environment um, that feels safe, that feels welcoming, um, and, and it's just part of a, a ritual, if you will, right? Preparing to enter into an emotional space or an expressive space. I like to make sure I have what I need in front of me so that I can stay here. Uh, I usually will turn off my phone, uh, put it on silent, and give myself at least 30 minutes to work. And when you're in an art therapy session, usually that... Uh, you know, is uh, enough time to get started, to get an idea down, um, but of course you can take as much time as you need 
but give yourself at least 30 minutes to get into uh, a flow. So I am gonna walk you through my process here. Obviously we're all staring at a blank piece of paper and that can very much be overwhelming as I had shared in another blog post. Sometimes it helps me to get some inspiration from where I am in the moment. Uh, I usually will take some time to breathe. So take a deep breath in and out and I'll do that again. So for today, I am going to just start with process. Um, I, I'm going to choose colors and see where that takes us, and then I'll walk you through decisions that I make from there. Um, so I am interested in taking my sponge right now and working with the pan pastels that I have. So I would like to create some form of background, and so here I go. I'm going to go ahead and dip it in the white, and in my white there were some colors in it. So you can see there's some blue. So I'm going to just see what that looks like on the page. Yeah, so that makes um, a beige tone. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working with that light beige tone across the page. And I'm really feeling something earthy and light from this color. And I'm noticing that maybe I want to add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to mix a little bit more. I added some brown and a little bit of green to my sponge and then went back with the white. And I'm already noticing that this process of going across, really relaxing, I'm paying attention to my body, how it's responding to what I'm doing. I noticed that this hand was getting a little tight, so I breathed in and out and sort of released the tension in my hands. So as you're creating art, very much noticing how your body's responding. Okay, so I'm going to keep on adding the brown to the white, maybe add a little green and yellow. And I'm noticing uh, I feel a little constricted by the material, so I'm going to push them out of the way and continue with covering my paper. I'm going to go ahead with the green and the brown. So maybe I can show you here how I'm mixing. So I took a little green, a little brown, and then I am going directly into the white to create this earthy toned green and brown tan color, if you will. So more recently in my artwork, I have been using a lot more green, a lot more um, like a peachy, orange tone, so I'm going to probably want to bring that in here with that tan tone. I want to bring in a little bit more orange. Here we go. So if you have tape, you can always tape down your, your paper. I like to move mine around a lot, so I leave it free, um, but if you want to tape down your paper, you can do a little border of tape and it's artist tape that you would use. So it's low tack, so it doesn't rip your paper when you take it off. Okay. So now that I have a background, I'm gonna start implementing uh, my other pastels and kind of work with them and see where it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of my Prismacolor new pastels. It's a little bit harder of a, a chalk pastel and just sort of run it over and see how it changes the feel of the picture. So this is sort of a creamy yellow tone. 
and I really like how it is filling in some of the gaps that the other pastels did not. So if you'll notice, and it may be hard to see, but there is some dust collecting here. So throughout your process, you may want to tap it to the side if you have a garbage can nearby. I like to work with the dust, so I'm going to take my fingers and sort of blend it in. So I had mentioned that the paper that I'm using is a mixed media paper by Canson. I like it because it does have texture. It holds the chalk pastels, um, but it's not too textured where it's distracting for me, right? And everyone's gonna have their own preference, uh, but usually with chalk pastels, you want paper that's gonna have some grab. And so I'm really enjoying just smoothing out the chalk for some of you. This may feel strange. Um, I think there's a love-hate relationship with chalk pastels. It can make your fingers feel really dry. Right now, as I'm making this video, it is winter time in New Jersey. So uh, I'm noticing that dryness in my hands as I'm working with it. It's always helpful after you're finished to apply lotion. Um, And actually in art therapy groups that I've run in a PHP IOP facility, um, I did give people the option to work with latex gloves, um, you know, surgical gloves. If, if that's something that helps you ease in, you know, it's not ideal. Obviously, um, you're losing that sensory experience, but you know, there's ways around that discomfort you know, and, and sort of easing into it. Okay, so I went ahead and did that with the yellow. I think at the top, uh, let me see, and I, I'm already realizing I'm making sort of a, a landscape type environment because I have a bottom section and then a top. So I'm going to go ahead with the top and add this sort of pink peach tone salmon-like, if you will. And I'm going to run it across the top. Really like how that looks. I'm going to go ahead with my, like, oops. Well, my nails picked off the seafoam green, so I'm just going to kind of work with it at the top here. Sometimes those things will happen, right? <laughs> um, something you don't expect. I'm going to go ahead and grab the larger one. Okay, and then I'm going to blend them with this yellow. Sometimes green and pink, because pink is so close to red and the complementary color to green, it can make sort of a muddy gray color. So I'm going in with a neutral tone between uh, green and red, which is this yellow. So the yellow sort of neutralizes any grayness that might have been happening between the green and the pink. And just as I'm mentioning that, for those of you who are familiar with color mixing, then this is just a review, um, but complementary colors. So these are colors across from each other on the color wheel. So red and green, blue and orange, purple and yellow, those are complementary colors. And they, when mixed together, will make, depending on what um, medium you're using, can make a dark, dark gray or brown, um, close to black. So just keep that in mind, especially with paint when you're mixing colors together, complementary colors while they help each other pop on the page when they're adjacent or next to each other, when mixed together, they do make that gray-brown, almost black color. Okay, so I'm getting this sort of pastel -y sky feel. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill out the top. And then with the dust, fill in the rest. And 
And you know what? For some of you, this might be the process, right? Just kind of adding layers of colors and seeing how they interact with one another. So just kind of going back and forth, adding to the layers of the colors. And for some of us, this might just be how we tone the background, get our background ready for anything that's going to layer on top. Again, I have no really idea for this, but um, I'm getting a sense that there's layers in the picture so that there might be three sections based on how the color was applied. So down here, I'm just going to go and get started with kind of what I'm feeling or sensing. So I picked up this pastel, but I actually think I want to use a little bit of brown. I also want to test the water here. See if I might be able to use this. Pick up some of this color on the brush. So I just wanted sort of a subtle brown, nothing too intense. Let's see if I add the brown directly. There we go. And in art therapy, you're, we're always testing and trying out new things. Some things work, some things don't. And that's why I always like to say you don't have to have any experience. Um, it, it, it is allowing yourself to not be an expert, right? Letting go of having to know everything and being okay with experimenting and learning in your own way. Obviously, it is nice to have techniques down or a certain idea of how materials work, um, but getting out of that intellectual space um, and, and just sort of allowing yourself to explore and discover, that can be um, even part of the healing process of art therapy, is letting it go, letting it be okay that you don't know. And that maybe there is no right way to know. Yes. Okay, so I'm liking that these striations are happening. They're sort of darker brown areas. Liking that a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead in. And start adding some darker details. So I have this, I don't know, feeling, and I'm going to open up my, my chest and my shoulders a little bit more because I'm noticing I'm feeling a little bit tight. So I want to open that up. I'm going to go ahead in with some spicy colors here, <laughs> some reds. And I really like when some of the softer pieces fall off and then I can just add it in. And so really just capturing the judgments here, you know, um, and allowing things to come through. All right, so again, had no idea I would make something like this. I'm going to go ahead and just keep working with what feels right. This sort of upward movement, repetitious um, drawing strokes seems like something I need right now. So I'm going to keep going with it and see how that impacts the drawing. I like how this is sort of coming across the layers. So it, it was feeling very separate to me. So it's almost like this is a way through those layers going up. So I'm taking my hand and just blending up. I'm 
go ahead and I've been wanting to use this green, so I'm going to use it. And it looks like we're going to be doing some sort of organic vine growth here. So as you can see, I'm just sort of alternating how this flows up. It's reminding me of like a seaweed type growth. It's almost like it is responding or floating in this space. And it's coming out here. I really like how the red is blending with the green, so I might be adding this all around. Yeah, I really like how that blended. It almost made like a gold, a golden color, golden brown. And so this I think is going to be what I'm working with for a good amount of time just to let you all know how my decision making is going. I'm, I'm deciding, all right, this is something I want to use to fill a lot of the space. It's not just going to be one aspect of it. This is going to come out throughout this, this page here. So. I haven't really done anything like this before, so I'm very excited to be making this video and showing you sort of a transformation in my artwork. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the green, but right now I'm recognizing that I want to pause because whenever I focus too much on one area, I like to pause, take a deep breath, and figure out um, do I want to add anything, add a color, change a color? So I think I do want to add a color to this. And I'm just thinking how I want to work with this green. And I think I want to go a little bit darker, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding a darker green and probably follow that up with a yellow so that when I go to blend with my finger, um, it might create different tones in this sort of growth. And as we were talking before, green and red are complementary. So right now, the green is sort of popping with the red visually. Noticing what I'm listening to as I'm working, I can hear the strokes, that repetition, and that's calming. If you start to slow down your movements, I noticed that my hand was getting tense. I'm Resting that, you can sh you know shift your breathing. Watching yourself draw, really zoning into these movements. You can really start to decide, hey, I'm going to slow down. It has that sort of isomorphic uh, experience where. You slow down on the outside, and internally, we're going to start to slow down on the inside. All right, so I'm going to try this, where I kind of like turn the pastel a little bit and make sort of wonky, I want to make these wonky branch-like uh, structures coming out of the more fluid seaweed. So these seem a little bit more rigid in their appearance. So a little bit more straight up versus this flow. And all I'm doing is sort of twisting it in my hand. 
All right, so at this point in time, I'm deciding that there's this like whoosh. <laughs> if I were to give this a sound, it's like whoosh. So I want to work with the red and maybe incorporate it a little bit more fluidly here. So I want it to seem a little bit more integrated. It, it was kind of looking bowl-like, and I want to maintain that containment, but maybe follow it through with some of these movements that I incorporated in the center. I don't want it to seem disconnected. So to me, this is a way to integrate them is by adding similar type of strands. It's almost like they're being held and I want to bring this down to the bottom so it almost looks like this is coming out from somewhere below. All right. Now I am going to add in that yellow that I was talking about because I realized before I have this urge to blend, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and add some yellow on top of all of this. And I'm going to even add it to the red to sort of bring it together. And you might be thinking like, oh, we did all of that work on the background and now it's getting sort of layered on top, but that's okay, right? That's okay. We, that's the, the process here. And, and we're sort of learning non-attachment as well, that, that change is all right. Sometimes in life we do put a lot of work in, in certain aspects and those parts maybe get unnoticed or um, you, you realize, okay, I did all that work putting the dishes in the dishwasher, then I have to take it out. Um, or I studied so hard on the SATs, but later on in life really doesn't have an impact now, right? So some things are going to stay with us and be visible some things go a little bit more to the background and that's okay. And that's what I love about this process here is that you're deciding what's made visible, what blends in, what gets seen or unseen. So I'm really liking how this yellow sort of integrates the background, the, the sort of red component at the bottom I could make this a, <laughs> a very long video, but I'm gonna try to figure out a way to find a good stopping point for all of us. And that's sort of the cool part about art therapy is that sometimes in a session, I know in groups, you might have to stop because of time, um, we have other obligations or responsibilities. And when you come back to the image, if you decide to, you might have a different vision for it or have a different ideal for what this is gonna look like. And that's pretty cool if you can come back to something and let it, allow it to change. Just like yourself, you're allowed to have opinions about something in one, one day and then it change. You're allowed to grow. What I'm loving about the process without overanalyzing it is that it was very much starting out separate. The, the band seemed separate, but right now my goal in using this yellow is to, to bring the red and the green together as if this were an integrated whole piece, that the red was not a separate plant or being from this inside, but the red and the green were together. 
At least that's what it feels like right now is that I'm trying to bring that together here. So I think what I'll do to end this is come back in with my light green, bring it down into the red a little bit more, come in with my dark green, and see if I can get this to all melt. And that's a decision that I'm making that seems right for this image. And what I love about chalk pastels is that you can layer and layer and you, the color still pops up on top. So even though I'm adding green on top of the red, the green is still coming forward. And if I were to blend it, of course that might change, but I really love that aspect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, run my fingers through a few areas. And then I'll stop us here. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around so you can see. Um, this is what I created today. And thank you so much for watching my process. All right, everyone. Well, I hope that was something that you might find inspiration from, uh, being able to watch me in process. Obviously, my hands are... <laughs> A little bit messy and I'm noticing um, yeah there's artwork on my hands as well so just to show you again this is what I was able to create in the short amount of time that we had and obviously it's gonna keep growing and changing um, but hopefully it was helpful to see that process and also me responding and reaction uh, sharing my reaction to what was happening that was very much genuine and authentic and how I work um, both as an art therapist when I'm witnessing someone create and also myself when I'm creating art. Um, so thank you for watching. Again, my name is Lauren Fallett. I work for Holistic Health Counseling Center. Please check out our website, hhccnj.com and arttherapynj.com as well if you're interested in learning more about art therapy or wanting to schedule a session. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye.